Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we're going to work on a Pen Fierce 7000. It's a very large reel. It's in for its uh, basic service. This one is one of the larger reels that they made. I think at the, the introduction of the 7000. Uh, uh, this is the Series 1 Pen Fierce. Uh, Series 2 had a, um, a drilled out spool. And uh, this one's in nice condition. So we're going to show you how to take this one apart, how to service it, and how to keep it fishing. And we're going to do that by removing the exterior pieces first. So we take the handle and the spool off, and we can get underneath this reel to show you how it's made, how it comes apart, and how to service it. So while I'm doing that, if you like these kinds of uh, videos, then I would encourage you to subscribe. And if you subscribe, please hit the notification button. That'll let you know when those uh, videos are posted, as I post frequently. And uh, which ones uh, interest you? Well, those are the ones you can watch. So I'm noticing we got some pretty fresh grease on here. This one came to me by way of Scott, who uh, was out at a, a local flea market. And so you never know what you're going to pick up when you're at a flea market. Sometimes the reels are in excellent condition and uh, need very little service. And sometimes, well, let's just say they've been around the block and uh, they're represented one way and are actually quite different when you open it up inside. But these look beautiful. The, uh, there's no evidence of any hard use on the uh, reel. And uh, that's always a good thing. So he's been f going to the flea markets out in uh, the Los Angeles area. And they, of course, have the Pacific Ocean there. So you would expect that this, uh, this reel would be seeing ocean fishing. But there's no real indication here of much use at all, no less that it's been dragged through the surf and have uh, salt water damage and the like. Well, this reel has screws that you can either use a flat bladed screwdriver on or you can use the Phillips head. So I use the flat bladed screwdriver to break the seal and now I'm using the Phillips head to walk it out. It's a little bit easier for me to uh, use that Phillips head kind of twirl it and uh, grip the screw as opposed to the flat bladed one. Sometimes that Phillips head screwdriver will um, slip in the slots when you're trying to break the hold of the screw so that's why I use the flat bladed screw to start. So this reel has a case that is separated under the rotor so you do not need to remove the rotor before you remove the case. These reels have got a good reputation. The only thing with the first two series of the reel was that the drag washers were felt washers. And uh, the felt washers tended to tear when you got under uh, a major fight. Well, I'm not seeing much here at all. This is a beautifully cleaned reel. But we'll continue with the video just to show you how to take it apart and service it. And uh, the reel seems to have been serviced recently. So folks ask me, you know, is it a waste of time to service your reel? Well, it's never a waste of time to service your reel. And they also ask me how frequently they should service the reel. And the answer to the uh, servicing of the reel frequency is annually. And if you really fish that reel hard, if it's your, your daily driver, so to speak, well, then you want to stop about mid-season and you want to do it again. So we just uh, removed the two screws that are tying down the axle shaft and now we should be able to slide the axle shaft out. And you can see this is a big drive gear, which means you have a relatively high speed uh, in this reel. With the axle uh, shaft out, you can remove the main gear. We should be able to slide the bearing off. And again, further indication that there's very little use. I think this has been serviced because that's not the way that the factory grease would would show. And uh, that makes sense. The Series 1 now uh, was, yeah, you can see we got some, some dark crease in there, which means it's time to change it. So the Series 1 uh, is probably about 10 years old now. And you, I think we may even got to the Series 4. The Series 3 changed over. Uh, it basically remained the same reel with the exception of the uh, the change to the HD100 drive washers. I'm going to take the crosswind block off, and that looks like a big screw in there. 
holding in the cross wind block. So here's a note. Use the right screwdriver for the screws. Don't go in there with a small screw uh, driver which could risk damaging the slot by butterflying it. Use the right size and you'll find that uh, you won't have any problems with that. All right, well, we've removed the screw that's holding it down. And you'll notice a couple of things as I go to fish this uh, crosswind gear off. The first is that I am wearing a protective glove on my hand. That keeps most of the greases and oils off. And the second thing you'll notice is that I use a parts tray. It's off camera, but all the pieces and parts that I take off go into that parts tray. All right, this is a bushing that goes inside there. Just be aware of that when you go to re reinstall. And then we just have that the grease on that crosswind block, which we'll take off. And then we'll go up top there and we'll remove the, the burring in that. So this is more about how this reel is made and servicing it. But of course, if yours is in, uh, in need of service, you want to do exactly what we're doing here. You want to clean out all the old grease. You want to inspect the pieces and parts. You want to do a re-lubrication after the cleaning. And you want to do an install that uh, keeps it going uh, for a long time. Up top here, we're going to remove the uh, rotor. To do that, the first thing you do is remove that tie-down clip, and that tie-down clip is held in with a small screw. And when I use my parts tray, what I do is I move that to a corner. I kind of keep them separated, so that'll go where that little tie-down screw is. And then we have the nut, and I think the nut might be a 13 millimeter. We're going to go check. It is, and then we'll use my deep socket. I almost always will use a deep socket with the pen because you have this lip and the lip on the rotor cap. Could make it difficult to remove it with a standard wrench. So go for a deep socket to take that off. Once that's off, that'll go into my parts tray. We'll take the rotor off and we'll give you a look underneath. So underneath here we have a it's an anti-reverse, and then we have a secondary, kind of a fail-safe dog. You'll see it come out just like that. There's two teeth on it. Those teeth intersect with the ridges inside the rotor cap there. And while I have the rotor in my hand, you can see the ridges here. We'll just use a shot of oil on that uh, trip point. And then we'll put a shot of oil into the gaps for the and a shot of oil onto the assembly where the roller is. So there you go. That's in good condition. We'll just work that in. And we'll get to the meat of this then. So you have an eccentric here. You'll see that there's a hole in that eccentric right here. And there's a spring in that hole. So that's where you're going to uh, get lost sometimes. Sometimes folks will pick this up and not know that there's a little spring under there. And again, for all indications, this reel has hardly been fished, if it's been fished at all. I, I'm going to say it's been fished because we do have the grease that's accumulated to the back side of the main gear. But other than that, there's very little discoloration in the metals. And um, we do know it's got line on it, and that uh, chances are that line has been in the water, but probably not been on the water very long. All right, there's three screws to this collar. First thing I'm going to do is notice the collar. The collar is not symmetrical. It is an odd shape. You'll notice that we have two rounded edges and we have a flat edge. And that flat edge is facing this uh, secondary dock. So you want to make sure that you take a picture along the way. Mentally, if you can handle it. Physically, use a camera, cell phone, anything to uh, take the pictures if you're like me and don't trust my memory from time to time. And then you want to make sure when you go to reinstall that you reinstall it with this flat side of that clamp facing the back end of the dog there. All right, the three screws are all the same size, so I don't have to worry when I go to reinstall. And now, shouldn't have any problem pulling this out. So here's your assembly that includes your anti-reverse. We'll go over this because it's important to know. First up, then, is a collar and a burring inside the collar. 
You'll notice that there is a ridge on the back end of this assembly. That ridge goes down. Next up, you have the anti-reverse. That anti-reverse has got a metal cap, and it's got a uh, plastic inside. It also comes with the collar. So that blue plastic faces down when you go to reinstall. And then we have a bearing underneath. And again, limited evidence that this thing has been out fishing because there's hardly any grease in the tracks of this gear. I'm just going to use a paper towel and my thumbnail to kind of clean out the grooves. You can rinse that down. You can use a penetrating oil to kind of let it degrease. And you can also use a brush, just like I'm doing here, to brush out the old grease. And notice that I'm kind of brushing it onto this paper towel here because I don't want that grease on my bench for the next time around. Let's take the brush then, load up with new grease. This is Pen Precision Real Grease. I'll show you the container in just a moment. And I'm not using it necessarily because it's pen grease. I'm using it because it's a fishing reel grease. And I want to make sure that I only use fishing reel greases when I do the repairs. So this is Pen Precision Real Grease. It's available pretty much at any sporting goods store. And um, we have a, a um, shielded bearing here, so we can go ahead and put some oil on that. Then we'll take that clutch, remember, blue side down, align that with the uh, flat sides of your pinion gear, put that on. Now we have the other bearing. We're going to do the same thing here. We'll oil that bearing, let that seep, seep in. Remember what we said, there's a ridge on this one. So that's going down that way. Bearing is on. Assembly is complete. We can just reseat that in here. I've checked the inside. There's no uh, buildup of any greases or oils or that inside there. So we can just go ahead and reinstall. Next up then is the collar. And for those paying attention, you'll remember we had a little conversation about this. That conversation said the flat end goes to the dog. So I trusted my memory on this one, but you know, from time to time I'm working on reels where I don't. My videos are my pictures. So I sometimes get a comment that says, well, you tell everybody to go ahead and do pictures and then you don't do them yourself. Well, I do. The videos are my pictures. And I can assure you from time to time I will stop my video and I will go back and I will look for a reference point. And believe it or not, sometimes that reference point is I saw a piece shoot out or I looked at my parts tray and I couldn't find the piece and I went to my video and sure enough, right at that critical juncture, it'll show that, well, I left it on my table or it bounced or whatever it did. And uh, that helps me as well. You don't have to do the videos, but uh, know that uh, you should take pictures at critical points so that you're comfortable with the reassembly. All right, so we did that. Top end is serviced. Now we have that eccentric. Remember what I said, this is a two-piece part. There's a hook. There's a hook underneath here that goes in that slot. This goes on top. And this is going to go on the pinion gear. And the beak is going to line with the little plastic stud that is on that anti-reverse dog. And again, you're going to run it this way. That's fine. It pulls in as you're reeling, and as you go to back pedal, it's going to push it out, and that's going to trap on those uh, edges inside the rotor. All right, that piece goes on there. We've oiled the seams of the rotor. We've oiled underneath on the trip lever bar. I'm going to put the rotor back on now. Easy enough to go to my parts tray, find the nut. Switch the direction of your drive on your ratchet, tighten it down, and with nothing else attached, it's a good place to give it a spin to make sure it's turning freely the way it should, and it sure is. So we'll keep going here. We're going to take the tie down clamp, find where there's a flat line where you can get the set screw, and come on over and do the set screw. 
And this is an easy step to forget. Everybody tends to want to rush in, get the axle shaft in place. Once you put the axle shaft in place, well, you can't get that clamp back on, so you better do it ahead of time. All right, speaking of the case, let's go down and just mop up a little bit here. There's not much going on in here. There's a little bit of old grease, as we mentioned. We want to do as good a job as we can of cleaning that off. I'll just grab a paper towel and just kind of mop up what little is in there. And if this hasn't been maintained, I think it has, I'm not thinking that this was serviced recently, but if it wasn't maintained, you saw how the factory greases the reel. And the factory tends to over-grease reels because it's going to sit in a warehouse for a while. Greases do evaporate. They've got a one-year warranty on most reels, and they don't want to take that reel back because of something that failed when it was related to grease. So they tend to really go big on the greases. I think that whoever did the reel before this did it right. They had the, uh, the right amount of grease on there. It wasn't uh, totally overloaded. And what happens when it gets totally overloaded is what you just saw in that main gear when we took it off. The centrifugal force is just going to spin that grease off, the excess grease off the parts. And well, the only thing that's going to happen there is it's just going to accumulate on the bottom of the gear. And that serves nobody's purpose. There's no moving parts back there, and it doesn't need to be there, so I would recommend against overloading. So we're just doing a nice amount of grease on the teeth here. Now I noticed when I took this off that there was grease on the face of this. Again, nothing's intersecting here. You don't need grease on the face of it. A little grease under where the bearing is going to go is fine. And we'll do the same thing with these bearings. We'll Give it a good drink of oil on both sides. And we'll go and install that bearing. Some some old timers probably, when you needed it, when these things were less uh, resistant to um, rust and corrosion and the like, would put the grease on there to stop the uh, grease, uh, I'm sorry, to stop the corrosion by uh, just having an extra layer of grease there. That's fine if you want to do that. All right, we're going to take the main gear, put that in. I'm going to take the stud. And the cross wind block now. And we're going to put the cross wind block over the stud. And into the channel. Kind of works like this. Now when you do that, you need to make sure you have clearance to get both of the screws back in. So if you don't, just walk that. Well, we're not going to be able to do it because this doesn't have an instant anti-reverse. Silly me. All right, I'll show you how to do this one because we do have one screw that's exposed. So let's go ahead and take the axle shaft, which I wiped off of the old grease. Put a light coating of grease. Don't put a lot on there because it's only going to squeeze out. Come back through the top now, and we can install that oh, I just knocked it off the stud. Okay. So I have the bottom screw exposed. Remember, there's two screws in here. I'm going to put the first screw in. And one of the problems with this reel is just that. You don't have an instant anti-reverse override. And uh, Penn, I guess, decided in their wisdom that most folks don't use it, so they eliminated it. Problem is exactly what you just saw there. If you need to backpedal a reel because you've got a jam or something in there, well, you can't. And most of the time that winds up with a damaged main gear. Well, we just went through the cycle so that we could bring the crosswind block down enough to get that second one in. Again, before you go any further, give it a spin so that you're comfortable that uh, everything is working properly. You can put a little bit of grease onto this track where that crosswind arm is going to ride up and down on. Well, that's all that's needed there. 
and take our side plate then. These case screws have a transparent washer on there, a clear piece of plastic. That's to keep the water out of the case. If you're uh, putting screws in and you don't notice that washer, take a look around. Generally speaking, you will find it. They're either stuck in the case or they're stuck on your desk or your workbench. And we're just going to grab that bigger screwdriver at the moment. Put that down. So if you have a question on any reel, it doesn't have to be this one, leave it in the comments section. I will try to answer it for you. I try to answer the questions in the morning, so if, uh, if you're leaving it in the afternoon or evening, don't get frustrated. Generally speaking, my routine allows me to answer a few questions before I get busy in the shop. And uh, if you need to contact me, email is the best way to contact me. I know there's a phone number on the business card that follows. A lot of folks try with the phone. Well, that's kind of hard to get, particularly when I'm working on a reel or doing a video. I don't have the uh, ability to go answer that. So if you could be so kind with these, uh, it works best to uh, just leave it in the comment section or send an email to me directly. Okay, just one more piece now. We're going to take the bump guard, put the bump guard on. We'll tie this up here. has just a little screw that goes in the bottom of the case here. And the only thing that needs to be done now is to go up top with the drag system. We'll confirm whether that's a uh, felt drag or not. And we'll uh, take care of this. Put the handle on. Give it a quick turn. Oh, it's turning beautifully, but I didn't expect anything else. I had no evidence that there was any damage in there. Here's your drag stack then. There's three small screws that are holding that cap on. This is a little bit of an attempt to get the uh, keep the water out, but that's tough. Top drag systems take all the water right through that button up top there, and uh, that gets tough. It's also tough as these small little screws. You can see how the water was in there because they've got salt on them. So Scott sent me a bunch of reels for service and repair. If you are watching this video and you're not comfortable servicing a reel or you just don't have the time to do it, well, I do that by mail. And if you send me a note to my email on the business card that follows, I'll be happy to provide you with service and repair information. All right, the clip is off. And let's see what we have here. So we have the felt washers. And there's nothing wrong with felt washers, but they need to be uh, oiled. You need to keep these things fresh. These are dried out. So a good dose of oil, use a fishing reel oil. That'll generally uh, keep these from tearing, which is the biggest concern with these kinds of drag washers. I've had a lot of folks ask me, can you switch these over to the HT100 washers? You can. In fact, as I mentioned, the third series of the Fierce Reels actually did that. They, sub they re finally replaced these felt washers with the uh, HT100s. So we're doing a stack. This has got five washers in it, I think. I lost count. And it alternates between the keyed washers and the eared washer. The key is the first one. And uh, we've done several now. And it's time for the second keyed washer. And we're going to put that last felt washer in. We've oiled each one of them. And you can see I got a pretty liberal dose of the oils there. And the last of that. And now we can go back in with that cap. We want to line that cap to the holes. The three screws are on the desk, and boy, are they hard to find. So we'll just get that back on. We'll button this up. We'll make sure that it's working. And uh, we'll finish this video for you. There we go. Having a little trouble lining that first hole up there. 
So I hope you're enjoying the video. If you did, please like it. And uh, tell your friends about the channel. I'm always looking for subscribers. I'm always looking to help folks. That's the whole idea of this channel is to teach you how to do it yourself. And uh, we cover all kinds of reels. This one happens to be a saltwater spinning reel. But uh, we cover freshwater spinning reels. We cover bait casters, trolling reels. Basically, if it's a reel, we cover it. All right, we're going to take... Uh, Take some rod and reel cleaner. I'm going to use Penn's version. A little squirt on a scrubby pad goes a long way. I'm just going to clean up some of the greases that maybe I left on the reel and maybe some of the, the tarnish or whatever might have been on there to begin with. It does a nice job. It's a, it's a cleaner and a wax kind of a thing. And just a little bit of a wipe off. We'll keep this reel looking nice, and in addition to the service that we did, that'll keep the reel running nice and fresh for a long time to come. Spool goes on, drag knob goes on, and once that adjuster's on, we'll give it a test, make sure that the drags are holding. It has a lot of max drag. The uh, max drag is not dependent on the type of material. And there you got five drag washers. Max drag is a function of area. All right, that's tight. And then once you tighten it up and make sure that it's working, back that drag knob off. Why? Well, if we left it tight like that, it's going to squeeze all the oils off that we just put on there. So you don't need to keep it that way. And after your trips, you should back your drag washers off. Look at that. Nice. Easy turning and fierce 7000, the original series. The service that we just did here, you can use for the fierce 2 and the fierce 3 as well. And basically every model, the size of the gears change a little bit, the size of some of the pieces of parts change a little bit, but for the most part, if you have a pen fierce reel, uh, the service that we just did here will work from a step by step process with that reel that you have as well. So, before we leave, I want to say a special thanks to our first responders and essential personnel. Appreciate everything you've done to keep us safe during the pandemic. To everybody, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.